Hey, it's Dougie Wood, and in this video, I'm going to be giving you my top five reasons why you should be building your next intranet in SharePoint Online. So we're going to be covering off some of the key aspects of SharePoint and looking at why you should be considering these features when thinking about building your next intranet. My first reason that you should be building your intranet in SharePoint Online is just how simple and easy it is to build out content inside of SharePoint. If I go back into that intranet we were just looking at, you'll notice there's an edit button across the top. Now when you edit a page inside of SharePoint, you'll see that actually it's made up of multiple what we call sections. So we have this kind of section on the left hand side, we have this section on the right hand side. We can then add in what we call web parts. So you can see as I hover over these spaces in between these existing web parts, we can choose to add in new web parts. So if I click on add web part, you can see that all of these web parts are just a set of series of web parts that you can add. So some frequently used ones, things like spacing, to add spacing between other web parts, news web parts, image web parts, buttons, text, images. It's all super easy and simple to add onto the page. Then once you've added it to a page, you can grab them and move them around using the arrows next to them. So everything is just drag and drop. Actually, I should also mention that SharePoint is also fully responsive, so you can use this on any device. So once you've kind of got it looking really nice on your desktop computer, you can also um, be rest assured that this will also look fantastic on a mobile phone. So you can see this is what it's simulated to look like on a mobile phone. It's all 100% responsive. Everything that I've built onto the page via my desktop computer is automatically made responsive and readily available to access on a mobile phone. My second reason that you should consider SharePoint Online for your next intranet is actually how the navigation comes together. Now there's multiple areas inside of SharePoint that you can build navigation. We can build mega menu navigation bars to make it easier for people to find things with less clicks. There's quick links web parts, uh, call to action web parts. There's so many things you can use to help people navigate. And in fact, actually, the core main elements of SharePoint really is about helping people navigate to information that, that they need to find easily. So going back onto our intranet, you can see we have a navigation bar across the top up here. Now this is really simple and easy to turn into a mega menu. In fact, if I just click on edit, you can see I can add a new link in here. So let's just add a link, say Microsoft website, like so. Then click on to make this a sub link, click on save. And there we go, we've got a drop down now of sublinks underneath our navigation bar. You'll see on this page, there's also loads of other areas that we can use for navigation. We've got things like My Frequent Sites, which is an automatic list of content, um, which is essentially all the SharePoint sites I've been accessing. My Recommendations, so content that's been recommended to me. I've got things like this little slider here, so I can have quick links in a tile format or buttons, or I can even provide these larger kind of images or call to action web parts can, that can be used to easily navigate to core areas of my intranet. The second main purpose of an intranet is to provide the latest information, updates, and news to your users via the intranet. I always tell people that I work with that SharePoint essentially has two main purposes. One is navigation, which is what we looked at before, helping people find things easily, and communication, about providing the latest updates and information and making sure that SharePoint becomes your single source of truth. Now, in this example that we're looking at here, we have multiple areas of news. So you can see across the top, this is actually a news slider. So these are news articles that we can either create directly inside of SharePoint by click on new and the news post, or what they call news links, which is linking to news articles on third party websites that will automatically bring through the sample thumbnail image, text, and even a summary description of the news article as well. News can also be displayed in multiple ways. So it could be that we filter the news to make it specific to the user that's currently looking at it so that they can only see news, say, from their department. So say, for example, if I'm part of the leadership team, then maybe I'm getting news which is only relevant to the leadership team. If I was in the HR team, maybe I'm only getting news that's relevant to the HR team. 
And the same goes for things like country. So maybe that I can get news based on the country that I work in. So I'm based in the UK. So maybe I just get UK or London based news. Whereas my colleagues that are in the US, maybe they are getting news from the New York office that they work in. Again, there's multiple places that we can have news. This is another way that we can display news in these larger tiles. Um, so again, maybe this is more just like all the news from the organization. And as new articles are added, they'll start off this top left hand corner. And then as another article gets added, this article will move along like so through these stages, then it'll finally get into this area, which has lost its image, um, but it's just got the title. And then once it gets off to the end there, it'll fall off the edge. Um, and we can click on see all to see all the previous news articles that have dropped off this particular page. Um, there's so many different ways that we could display this um, in, in other ways as well. So just another little example here, you can see this is a very news heavy homepage. So we have all the news which is being displayed um, here. We have volunteer news. So this is news articles, which is directly for people that are interested in the volunteering aspects um, of this intranet. And then my region. So again, if I'm working in the London office, it could be pulling through only news articles that have been tagged specifically with the region of London. But again, you can come up with whatever categories of news that you like. Other types of categories I've seen in the past before are things like CEO updates or senior leadership updates. So news articles which are coming directly from the senior leadership team. This keeps engagement levels and the user experience really high um, so that the, um, the senior leadership team are communicating on a frequent basis with the whole organization. I've even seen filters on news for things like job role, job type, so you're only seeing things that are really relevant to you. I've worked with organizations in the past before that have split their news um, based on a more corporate style of news for office workers um, and more like frontline workforce news, which is only for the guys out in the field um, to keep them up to date on what projects are going on, updates of things um, that they need to be aware of, new health and safety um, things uh, and general updates. The next thing to consider about your new intranet is the security who can access it and what controls are you putting in place to make sure that only the relevant people have access and only the relevant people can create new content. Now SharePoint perfectly has a solution for this in the fact that it has what it refers to as permissions. Now permissions are actually broken out into groups. We have what we call site owners which are full control users and these are people uh, described as full control of the SharePoint site uh, the content, the theme, the permissions, the settings, and all of the kind of associations to other content inside of SharePoint. Now, site owners are essentially the content owners. They're the people that can do everything in the SharePoint site. We then have site members. So these are people that are typically only contributing content to SharePoint. So maybe they're creating news articles, uploading documents, and things like that. Then we have what we call site visitors. And these are people, although it says no control, it actually used to be called read only, which I think is a much better description, which means that they can only log on to SharePoint, see news articles, download content if you want them to, but they're only a consumer of the content rather than creating the content. And of course, we can lock this down in multiple ways. So only certain people have certain access. So say, for example, we had a news area specifically for departments and only each department could create their own news in that space. We can do that or we could lock it down. So, for example, there's a manager's toolkit area and only people with the role of managers can get access to the content in that particular space. I just wanted to pause for a second and ask a quick favor. If you're enjoying this video, please do subscribe to my channel. It's a free way that you can say thank you to me and I really do appreciate it. If you need any professional help setting up your SharePoint intranet, there's a link in the description on my YouTube channel, which will take you to a contact form to get in contact with me and you will have a free consultation to talk about how we can help you set up your new SharePoint intranet. It's also worth noting there's plenty of videos on my SharePoint channel all about SharePoint, but also Microsoft Teams, Forms, Power Automate, and so much more. So go and check those videos out after this. And then the final reason, and to be honest, there's been so many reasons that you should use SharePoint as your intranet. And I've just picked some of the most 
well, not necessarily obvious ones, but ones which I don't think necessarily everyone always considers. But this one, to me, is really useful. The ability to have stock images built into your intranet, which are always being up to date, they're always high quality, large images that can be used for all sorts of different things. You can use them in image web parts, in news articles, you can use them across all of the content as part of the content management system in SharePoint. So let's just say, for example, we wanted to create a brand new news article. By click on new and then click on news post, not only do we have all of these different templates for our news articles that we can build, I'm just going to jump into a blank article to show you how we can use the stock image library that is built into SharePoint Online. So by selecting um, our kind of image space across the top up here, not only can we actually change the way this looks, so I can change the kind of the spacing, so if I want to have more of an image, um, I could make this a sort of color block so it's much bigger. And then I can select my image by clicking on Browse Images. Now I can choose to upload my own images if I wanted to, or search the web, um, but I'm gonna use the Microsoft Stock Image Library. Now this is a fantastic tool. There are hundreds if not thousands of different stock images which are completely royalty free. Now I know it's not necessarily breaking the bank to have a third party um, image stock image library but actually it's really helpful to have all these image images in one place which are constantly being updated and often they they have a very similar kind of look and feel so if you're happy with the way that these look it provides a nice consistent feel to all of the imagery which is being used on your internet you can use this to search based on color so say for example if your brand uses a lot of greens you could search by green and find a lot of colors which are using green or by topic, so say for example, you're looking for pictures of people in offices, we can search the word office, and then that will have all of the kind of imagery of people that are working inside of offices. Please do subscribe to my channel, and if you have any questions, use the comments feed below.